Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is a great honor for me to be given a chance to share my work with us. So I spent the four days for the dissection of the human cadaver. If you are not scared for to see a human cadaver specimen, please join to the, my anatomical workshop. So today I'm talking about anatomy of the lymphatic system. If you're talking about your, your colleagues, so then anatomy of the lymphatic system, so the people know a little bit about it, but it hasn't had any concrete idea. So that's the area I'm working. So, <clears throat> so then uh, several months ago, so I visited to the Vienna and then so went to the uh, anatomy museum named uh, Josefina, attached to the University of the Vienna. So you can have a look, so here, so it's a, there is a life-size wax model uh, collected in this museum. This wax model is the, like a life-size, and then they are produced in uh, Italy. So this is a, one of the famous ones, with Venus, and then coupled that specimen is like a here. It's including a lymphatic display. So such a the precise anatomy of the lymphatic system. And then come up the idea why we don't know much about it. So then uh, its a history is also very important. So then so I just went to the medical library when I started for the lymphatic research to learn who did the, uh, who find the lymphatic, so who did the study. So the discovery of the lymphatic system is credited by the Italian anatomist named Gasparo Azeri. So who dissected the living dog and then finding the white uh, cord on the mesentery. So he first saw, the, so this might be the nervous system, but he used, cut the, the, this cord by the scissors, and then suddenly milky liquid this came out. So then suddenly he, he realized this is something uh, related with the absorption of the nutrient. So this could be the start of the lymphatic anatomy. And then for the technical aspect, so Romanian anatomist named Anton Nuk find that the mercury could be the ideal substance to demonstrate the lymphatic system. The reason is mercury is very slippery uh, material. So the, when mercury was injected into the human specimen, so this one is going everywhere. So not only going to the lymphatic, but also going to the vascular system as well. But the, now the anatomist uh, just selected the information about the lymphatics and then suddenly the diagram is getting much more detailed. And then this mercury method is used for the next 300 years. And then one of the famous anatomists in the uh, uh, University of the Paris in the SAPI, so making uh, this diagram. So the center diagram is still being used in the, uh, the cover page of the lymphatic journal, Lymphatic Research and the Biology. But so, as for the scientifically, so it's quite fancy, but it's not actually, it's not accurate. So like the number of the lymphatic vessel in the arm, so you may see today uh, in my prosection, it's too many. The reason is, so mercury only can demonstrate in a few lymphatics in uh, one specimen. So this is a, like a summary diagram for the multiple specimen. So that's why the, it's a little bit different from the, uh, uh, the uh, one individual. Um, and then in the 20th century, is suddenly the diagram is changed to the like a child. The reason is anatomists realize mercury is a toxic material. So then they switch to the mercury to the more safe material. It's a, like an oil painting color. So oil painting color is only travel the short distance in the, the cadaveric tissue. So that's why anatomists switch to the big adult cadaver to the small child cadaver or fetuses. So now it's difficult to obtain in, uh, this kind of the material. Also, the ethically, it's very difficult as well. So this is a reason. So anatomical study of the lymphatics is faded out. So if you're talking about uh, anatomists in your institution, probably there are not many people can answer your question. So then my start is, so I chose the, my topic for the lymphatic anatomy. So, but... So there's no mentor. So nobody knows how to do it. So then I need to find out the method by myself. So one day, so then I work in, a, this is a, a, the first specimen I tried in the 2001 at the University of the Melbourne. So 
So one frozen arm is stored in a deep freezer. So I picked up on the sword. And then so injecting a blue dye in a web space. So nobody expect anything happen, but actually something happened. So there's a, a blue vessel is shown on the, uh, the, the injection into the even the frozen and sold cadavers. At this moment, so nobody has any idea what this vessel is. And then, so fortunately, so the, my background is a plastic surgery. So reconstructive microsurgeon, I have a microsurgical skill to cannulate into the, this tiny vessel. So this is the actual scene, scene in the 2001 when I start. So then injecting the orange color substance, which is a radio contrast medium. And then, so after perfused, so that I took the x-ray. And then, so it's harder to see it. Only the one or two vessel is shown on the x-ray. So if I had another experience to inject into the arterial system and the venous system, one injection goes everywhere. So this time, so then, First time I realized the lymphatic system is totally different from the other vascular system. And then, so first I was using the, the blue dye, and then I switched to the, the hydrogen peroxide. It's very easy material. The reason is using the blue color dye is mess up the tissue, and then cannot find it more. And then I switched to the hydrogen peroxide. It's very uh, simple. So then when they injecting the hydrogen peroxide into the human cadaveric tissue, it's making the fine oxygen bubbles. Oxygen bubbles inflate in the lymphatic vessel, so it can be identified under the microscope. The reason anatomists cannot identify the lymphatic is, so after the death, it's going to be collapsed. So hardly to distinguish from the surrounding soft tissue. Another thing is, so the blood vessel is contained in a red blood cell, so then can be seen by the naked eye. But the lymph fluid is transparent, so then crops and then transparent lymph fluid, I couldn't see it. So then I published this method in 2005. So this is an arterial injection, this is a venous injection, this is a middle is a lymphatic in a separate specimen. And then, so now I got the method. So the, uh, the uh, lymphatic in the arm displayed like this way. So if you can join uh, my pro section, I can show you uh, this kind of the, the cadaver today as well. So then take the x-ray. So the, most of the people said, so the lymphatic having uh, so much individual variation, it's harder to understand. But once dissecting the many specimens, I find that a couple of the patterns. So then caramine, so the when I dissecting from the distal side to the proximal side, and then until the leads to the lymph node. And then once linked to the lymph node, I attach the color to the lymph node. And then retrogradely attached to the same color in a corresponding the lymphatic vessel. So now we can see which part of the skin drain to the which, part, which lymph node. So in the medial side, in the uh, many specimen, it's the green color territory is a dominant territory. So these are the going to the one lymph node in the armpit. So, more confusing thing, so there is a two system, so superficial system and the deep lymphatics. So where the deep lymphatics you will find, so the deep lymphatics, is the number is much smaller, and then running along the major artery. In the arm, so here is the ulnar artery and the radial artery and the brachial artery. So you will find the lymphatic vessel in the, this, the deep area. And then moreover, so there is a small lymph node it's along, located along the deep lymphatics. These are the called interval lymph nodes. We still don't know about the function of the lymph node. So lymph node is not only in the armpit, actually in the forearm and then upper arm. So this is a picture of the interval lymph node. It's quite small. It's normally the three to five millimeter. So the most of the lymphatics in the arm is connected to the lymph node in the armpit, but there is an exception. So the lymphatic vessel running along the cephalic vein, it's not going to the armpit, it's straight going to the neck. So lymphocentrography is showing the same the pathway. So this, uh, the, uh, the bypassing pathway is excep exceptionally important so to prevent the lymphedema. So I'm going to talk about the, this in the, my second talk this afternoon.
So this is a way I uh, <coughs> demarcate the lymphatics. First, injecting the lymphatics in the arm, and then so making a one long incision, and then removing the bone, and then spread it on, on a plastic sheet, and then taking the X-ray, and then chasing the lymphatic vessel, and then so attach the color to the lymph node, and then retrogradually attach the same color to the lymphatic vessel, and then. So we can see so the, uh, the lymphatic territory in the skin. And then finally wrap up. So this is a way So I define the lymphatic territory. So I also study in the breast area because the breast is very important for the, the breast cancer management. So the, most of the anatomical textbook is describing so lymphatic in the breast is radiating from the nipple. But the real, realistically, the condition is nothing different between the male and the female. So the lymphatic is not radiated from the nipple. They are converged into the armpit. So the reason is, so the lymphatic system is already developed at the time of the childbirth. So the breast tissue is going to develop after, after the puberty. So that's why the, already the lymphatic anatomy is established in the younger foot. So, so then another thing is uh, which steps the lymphatic vessel is lining. So that most of the breast oncologic textbooks showing the lymphatic vessel is lining very, very superficial. But the one specimen I did make in a cross section and the flip over and the take the x-ray. So that these lymphatic vessels not only located in a superficial under the skin, and then couple the lymphatic vessel passing through the breast tissue. So this vessel is of important for the breast cancer metastasis, I believe. So then after studying arm and the breast, so now I start to study in the four quarter specimen. Because uh, everybody knows breast cancer surgery can affect the arm lymphatic drainage. But for the anatomic area, it hasn't looked at carefully about the relationship between the arm drainage and then breast lymphatic drainage. So then this is the same specimen, this is an x-ray, and then this is a schematic diagram. So then I apply the, my lymphatic territory. So then I find, so the blue color territory is overlapping from the arm, from the, also the breast area. So this can be maybe taken for the breast cancer treatment. But like uh, this pathway in the purple, is going to the clavicular lesion, is straightforward. So it might be the, uh, theoretically, if we can recognize in this pathway during the actual you know, dissection, can be preserved. So there might be the, some of the preventive effect to stop making the lymphedema. So I study in the leg as well. And then, so there is a deep lymphatic also located in the leg. And then interval lymph node is located like this, uh, this position. And also, this is a, a, the actual the, the, my dissection. So the, the, this superficial lymphatic vessel can be found in the fat layer. So then, so this lymph, deep lymphatic is located much, much deeper. It has some special gap between the superficial and the deep. It's, so it's quite independent. So this lymphatic vessel is found next to the major artery. So then, oh, sum up the, all the information, I make it up so as a lymphosome. So the lymphosome means uh, the skin territory of the lymphatic. So these are the an a normal anatomy, but the lymphedema condition is uh, anatomy is totally changed. So we need uh, two sets of the mind. One is normal, and then another thing is uh, anatomical change in, in lymphedema. So now we having uh, this inside green machine in a different type, and then. So if we can apply it, it's not working. So the lymphatic is showing the, the like a, a one straight line in the normal. So then this line, so we are seeing like a, this this layer. So it's a superficial lymphatic we can see in the inside in green. Sorry, the video is not working. So 
So the in signing in, there is some specific sign for uh, called the dharma backflow. So the straight line is stopped and then start to show in a spider network kind of the image. So this called as a dharma backflow is a specific sign for the lymphedema. So then, so the the dharma backflow having uh, two meaning. So one is so here's uh, the still picture showing. So the linear channel is stopped here. So then dharma backflow is start to show up the lipid distal from the blockage spot, and then. This one is extend to the lateral side, and then finding uh, some patent lymphatic channel, it switched to this lane to the other lane. So like a bridging. So this one is broke. So then, so the, the utilizing a skin network to find the patent lymphatic channel. So it's actually the diluting or so, so <coughs> making the, the bypassing pathway. So. But in the advanced condition of the lymphedema, we no longer see any of the patent lymphatic vessels. All the, the arm is covered by the dharma backflow, so that these uh, the superficial lymphatic vessels are disappeared, and then dharma backflow take over the role of the lymphatic drainage. So then, when I uh, studied uh, more than 250 cases of the patient, I find that there's quite a correlation about the severity of the lymphedema and the amount of the remaining lymphatic vessel. And then I'm making the MD Anderson in the signing green staging. So the uh, stage zero is uh, like uh, the normal. It's, we can see the linear channel. And then start to show in the, the replaced by the small amount of the dharma backflow. And also the stage is increasing. It's a dharma backflow, the amount is going to be increasing. So in a summary of the, my the presentation, so the lympha, this, these are the take-home message of my presentation. The lymphatic system is divided into the superficial and the deep. So separated by the deep fascia. Deep fascia is on top of the muscle. So the deep uh, lymphatics is located under the muscle layer. So there is a two type of the lymph node. One is a regional, so which are normally normal lymph node in the armpit or growing lesion. But there is another set of the lymph node. It's called the interval lymph node. It's located along the deep lymphatics. So the superficial lymphatic system can be demarcated into the territory known as the lymphosomes. And then in the summary of the, uh, in the lymphedema condition, is a dharma backflow is a sign of the lymph fluid congestion. So, and then dharma backflow can work as a detour route. So then if I see the dharma backflow in the patient, I always said, this is not a bad sign. So your body is accommodating a new condition and then try to maintain the drainage pathway. And then collateral formation doesn't always prevent the lymphedema. So the body always making some collateral formation, but with or without the collateral formation, it's not the, the major factor of the lymphedema. I talked a little bit more about my second talk. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>